where has the year gone? We have 11 short days left of 2022 and I'm truly shocked. I want to personally say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who joins me each week here on YouTube and lets me share simple easy recipes that you all seem to really enjoy. I feel so blessed to have this amazing community surrounding me for a place that I can be creative. Today I am sharing my most popular and favorite recipes of 2022. There's a lot of them so buckle up. We have so many recipes, 24 if I counted correctly in total, that were not only the most popular but also my favorites to share. You'll find my blog link below where you're going to find almost every single recipe that I'm sharing with you today. And you're going to find a link to my ebook that is on a sale. You can actually get all five of them for just $7 now through the end of the year. Check out both links for more delicious recipes. And as a huge thank you for all your love and support, today's video actually includes a giveaway. You can find all the details to today's giveaway in my description box, but here's what you're going to need to know. Six of you are going to be gifted a $50 Amazon gift card each. All you're going to have to do is like this video, make sure you subscribed and leave me a comment letting me know which recipe in today's video is your favorite or which one you're going to try first. Again, all the details for today's giveaway are listed in the description box, so check it out. But we have so much cooking to do in today's video. Let's begin. Usually, I save the best recipe for last, but not today. This one was like a happy little accident and it is so delicious. Now, if you don't have any brown sugar on hand, that's okay. A lot of people have cinnamon in their cupboard. You could definitely do cinnamon instead or just cane sugar, sugar, whatever you have on hand. I feel like a lot of times we all have pantry staples like baking soda, baking powder, a little bit of sugar, cinnamon, etc. So those are the items that you could definitely use. And I'll make sure to type this recipe and leave it down in the description box below because you're gonna wanna make these muffins. So I chopped three apples Apples, added them to a pot and cook them with one cup of water for about 15 to 16 minutes with a lid on with medium heat. Once they were nice and tender, I added them to my food processor, but I'm going to make a note. Try not to add any of the hot liquid to the food processor unless you have one that um, can hold the hot liquid. Otherwise, it just drips out and makes a huge mess. Trust me. I've been there. So then you're going to add two cups of oats and you're going to whip it up really quickly and it's going to become like a nice paste, almost like a cooked oat. And then what I did is added about a quarter cup of brown sugar, a little bit of baking soda and baking powder. And then I added them to a muffin tin. Now I actually didn't have a muffin tin when I was making these. So I quickly ran to the Dollar Tree and was happily surprised to find them there for just $1. Super budget friendly. And I feel like everyone can grab one at that price. I mean, if you don't have one, I don't know how I didn't have one. Possibly in the move, my old ones might have gotten tossed. But like I said, these muffins are phenomenal. I feel like they would make a great grab-and-go breakfast, something children would like, plus they are great for snacks as well. Another thing you could make if you didn't want to make muffins with this kind of meal plan per se is you could also make oat apple cinnamon brown sugar pancakes kind of using the same ingredients but switching it up a little bit adding a little nut milk with the oats blending that up and then making pancakes which would also be phenomenal i really like to take the same ingredients and make different things over and over and over i feel like not only is it budget friendly but it also keeps you inspired and creative and then sometimes amazing little muffins like these come out of nowhere just by using the same ingredients and then you're just in awe that something so delicious was created. Nobody told me to settle down Day nights and late nights don't get around But there's something about you Something about you I like I 
I shared this recipe last summer and it was so popular here on my channel. I will link that recipe video down below if you want to check it out. It has a lot of really good recipes within that video, but I did this with a red sauce and at the time I wasn't gluten-free and I have been loving the fact that I have gluten-free noodles in my life from Thrive Market so I can make this recipe again and I actually think I prefer it with the cheese sauce versus the red sauce, but either way is delicious. They're so easy. It's just a quick three ingredients. You boil your noodles. I don't let my noodles cook as long as the package says. I typically leave them about two minutes shy so they finish baking in the oven just so they're really nice and pliable so I can put the beans in the inside, roll them, pour the cheese sauce on top, and bake them at 350 degrees for about 12 minutes. I think this recipe is great for a family. I have heard a lot of you say your kids really like it. You can switch the bean components out. You can add extra veggies. I'm a very simple person so this is like the perfect meal prep for me so I can take these along with me for work during the week which is why I made them this day and I just think they're so delicious with this cheese sauce which you're gonna see that recipe here in a little bit so stay tuned I will leave the full recipe typed out in the description box for everyone in case you want to make this cheese sauce. I highly recommend it. It's so easy to make. The components are super simple, but you can make it your own by changing the seasonings, adding more, taking away. But we like to add jalapenos, a can of Rotel. I like to keep it really simple because it makes it super budget friendly, plus the items you typically always have on hand in your pantry. Carrots, potatoes, garlic, some seasonings. Put it in a high-speed blender and you have this amazing cheese sauce that you can use for so many recipes. This next recipe is actually two recipes in one, but you can split it however you'd like. I'm gonna use both of them. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my food processor out. If you don't have a food processor, that's okay. You can use a blender if you want to. It'll work. To that, I am going to add about two cups of beans, some cilantro, garlic, and some of my homemade veggie broth. So I'm gonna start with about a third of a cup of the veggie broth and then add a little bit more as we go along with the blending process. But we are making a black bean hummus. a lot with jackfruit here on my channel but I actually really enjoy it every single time I purchase it I'm like oh my gosh I forget how much I enjoy it and when you're in the kitchen and the beat drops you just got to go with it if you're not having fun in the kitchen you're doing it wrong make it fun turn on some music dance meal prep make your meals be silly I hope you have a ton of fun and if you can tell me what song this is 
Comment down below. We can be best friends forever. Now that you have witnessed my superior dance skills, seriously though, if you're not having fun while you're cooking your food, like, why not? You should be. You should be having a ton of fun in your kitchen. Behind the scenes, I am making a mess. You saw my dishwasher was open. I have dishes all over. But I just turn on some really good music, always in the early 2000s <laughs> emo vibe. <laughs> but I love it. And I just get to work and I prep all our food and I just love being in my kitchen. So to the jackfruit, I am adding some onion powder, garlic powder, Nothing too bold or heavy. You could definitely add some ginger if you wanted to. I feel like that goes really good with barbecue sauce, whatever you'd like. And then I just uh, kind of saute it a little bit in a pan, I guess, if you will, and break down a, the jackfruit so it's nice and tender. So if you've never had jackfruit with barbecue sauce before, it is supposed to be like a mock pulled pork or a pulled chicken, if you will. I actually prefer it, obviously, way over chicken or pork. I've mentioned this before, but I've been plant-based for two years. I will link a video above with a what I eat in a day plus my plant-based story in case you're curious as to why I went plant-based. But this is delicious. If you have a family that still eats meats, I would actually try this out on them and not tell them what it is. They'll probably really love it. With sticky rice, it is so good. My husband and I truly, truly, truly love this meal. I feel like you could do anything with it. You could put it on sandwiches. You could make pizza with it. I think we've done pizza before in the past. We've also done lettuce wraps with it. It's really good. I wish it came in bigger cans. I'm going to have to look to see if I can find it in like bigger quantities on Amazon or something because everywhere here I can only find it in like a little can and then I can get it on Thrive Market for actually cheaper than I can at Whole Foods or even Trader Joe's. Okay, meal number two. She's tiny, but she's going to be mighty. We have some pasta garlic, lemon, and spinach. We're gonna do a lemon garlic pasta, but we're gonna roast the garlic. And I'm going to do that little like pop it and put it in the um, in the aluminum foil and pop it in the oven and it's gonna be so good. And then a lemon sauce and of course some micronutrients and some greens. We got spinach, it's gonna be so good. Are a few different ways to roast garlic in the oven. I only had aluminum foil on hand, so that's what I used. And I did use a little bit of avocado spray. You'll see, I think he used like three sprays, so very little. This was amazing. It is definitely time consuming because it did take 45 minutes to roast, but oh my gosh, my mind was going 100 miles an hour thinking of all the ways I could use this roast garlic in hummus, in sauces, eating it just as it is. It's so good. It amped up the flavor of this pasta from like a 10 out of 10 to like a 20 out of 10. Simple, easy recipes are not only budget friendly, but you have to learn to utilize the ingredients you have, especially being whole food plant-based. You have a lot of ingredients you can use, but at the same time, it does kind of feel limited when you are trying to be super budget friendly. So I highly recommend trying out both of these recipes. Neither of them disappointed. I feel like I'm a solid two for two on Pinterest this week and I'm super happy about that because oftentimes I won't even share the recipe that was inspired for me on Pinterest because the recipe doesn't even turn out. The amount of food my husband and I have made since my time on YouTube that we have made and not shared is amazing truly I, I shared a flop a few weeks ago you probably saw that video it was in a meal prep video and it didn't turn out and I was like you know what I'm gonna share it with you guys because sometimes even in my kitchen things don't I'm not a professional chef things don't turn out I'm just finding things that work for me and sharing them with you that's my entire journey here on social media is to just be true to myself find what works for me and share it with you guys and I just thought this was like the prettiest dish I love lemon and green together i feel like it's just beautiful it's so pretty isn't this just beautiful so try this out super simple super easy definitely will give your taste buds like magical powers i just had to tell you really quickly this meal tastes amazing the roasted garlic 
so good. If you're a big garlic lover like me, you're going to love this. And the reason I leave the lemon in the pot is one, I don't have a zester, definitely need to get one of those. But two, I think that's a Giada thing, if I remember correctly from the Food Network, she always says to leave the lemon in there and kind of let it steam, adds so much flavor. You would think this doesn't have a ton of flavor because it's just a little bit of lemon juice and some roasted garlic and spinach, but literally it is so delicious. I hope you guys give this one a try. I wasn't going to leave you hanging without a snack for this meal plan. Since I said this meal plan was for my husband, I thought it would make his favorite thing in the entire world, peanut butter cookies. When I do these types of planning videos for how we eat in a week, I try to utilize ingredients over and over and over in different ways. Now I found a peanut butter cookie recipe on Pinterest that's vegan, egg-free, but the number one ingredient was maple syrup, and maple syrup is so expensive. It's like $20 for pure maple syrup at any of our stores. I mean, you could use like the other version that's like corn syrup. I've used it before. It, it gets the job done. But I thought, you know what? Aquafaba is actually used in a lot of baking. So I used two cans of of aquafaba. I just drained it out of the chickpeas. As you saw, it was about a cup and a half of liquid and I added a half a cup of sugar and then I added a little bit of vanilla, peanut butter, and then I added my flour. I will type the recipe, leave it down below. My husband loved these cookies. He was like, these are so good. They're not as sweet as a normal peanut butter cookie because they don't have extra sugar and brown sugar and you know all the sweetness but he said they were super good I couldn't try them I can be around peanuts in case you're curious I just can't eat them so I do know that I can be around them because my allergy is technically on the low side so I've been around peanuts my whole life it's fine it's not a big deal I just can't ingest it because I get this like cough in the back of my throat that doesn't go away so I would highly recommend trying these out if you were to buy dry chickpeas and then cook them in your pressure cooker or instant pot or even on the stove, you would get that aquafaba and you could save it. Literally, this made so many cookies. I think it made close to four dozen. The dough, when it's ready, is super sticky and feels like Play-Doh. It's perfect. And if you don't have sugar on hand, it would cost you about a dollar to buy some sugar for this entire, you know, kind of meal plan, if you will. Most people have it in stock in their pantry. If you don't, you could run to your local Starbucks and ask for a couple sugar packets. You could ask your neighbor, hey, can I have a half a cup of sugar? Or you can eliminate it altogether from any of these recipes. It's not a must have. Maybe for the cookies, but really, you could go without it. And I always like to tell people because I always get a few comments that trickle in anytime I do an eat for $10 a week or a really extreme grocery budget challenge. If you are super in need of food, your family should eat. So go to your local food pantry and get food. Um, you can call 211 if you're here in the U.S. and figure out, you know, where your pantries are, what times they drop off. Some of them even deliver. I know we have a delivery service here now in Vegas that will deliver to people's door. Your family deserves to eat. You need food. If you are super, super strapped and you're really like, man, I can't get sugar this week, that's okay. I, and like I said, you can always ask a neighbor, geez, if you were my neighbor, I would be like, heck yeah, you can have as much sugar as you need. So make sure your family is eating. I do these meal plans because it helps us personally. Okay, for the first meal, I'm going to make a barbecue chickpea meatball, and I'm gonna put it with some of this basmati rice. We have quite a bit of rice on hand, and it's just a great, inexpensive way to bulk up any lunch, and it's easy to take with you. I'm actually going to make this rice in my pressure cooker, so I will get that started so it's kinda of like, set it and forget it and then we'll get the meatballs going. Hello, hello, hello. I just wanted to quickly chat with you while I was getting this rice together. I just want to say thank you for being here. I love sharing on YouTube. I love sharing what works for us and a lot of people will ask me to do specific videos but honestly I just show up week after week sharing what we do. And it, I hope at some point, someone along the way finds something I do helpful. And if not, it's entertaining. I never tell you guys how to eat. I don't tell you guys portions. I just share with you what works for us. And like I said, it hopes it will enlighten you, encourage you, or inspire you to try something new. So these meatballs were more like a mock chicken kind of 
a nugget kind of thing. They were so good. I made two pans of them and sent three meals for my husband for the week and I kept a few out as well. I also forgot to share with you the binder. You could use breadcrumbs, gluten-free breadcrumbs, panko, oatmeal. I use cornmeal. So good. I had a little bit of ginger too to kind of give it a kick. Really good with the barbecue sauce. I have made something similar to these as a but they were more of a dense round meatball that I made on the stovetop. I can link that video down below, but I'll put the recipe for these in the description box. I know it bothers some people that I don't measure things, but I do put a recipe in the description box that will work just fine. I eyeball a lot of things because it's my kitchen. It's my house. And I know a lot of you cook like I do and you really enjoy <laughs> my dump and go recipes and then some people just do not so this is like a really thick paste and if I would have had my air fryer in the house I would have probably shaped these into more of a nugget and made them in the air fryer and then dumped them in the barbecue sauce um, when they were done cooking probably cooked them at like 400 degrees for like six minutes four to six minutes each side in the air fryer so they're nice and crunchy but the cornmeal is so good in them so good but instead I decided to just kind of plop them out into little like not even a meatball or a patty they're just like a little spoonful and they baked so nice in my oven I ended up baking them at 400 degrees for 25 minutes so they get a little crispy on the outside and they're nice and kind of like chewy in the inside they really reminded me of like a better version of a vegan chicken nugget and I think I'm going to play with this recipe a little bit and kind of perfect it I even think refrigerating the dough if you will um, would kind of make it so you could shape it a little bit use a cookie cutter if you have kids and make like <laughs> really fun shapes I don't know this recipe is really good definitely awesome you should try it and then of course I made five cups of rice so we've been having rice a lot just because it's easy to eat cold hot you can make a lot of it so I did put I would say about two and a half cups of rice if I were to guess because these are big dishes and I'm using a I think I'm using a half cup measure but I'm like it's like a heaping half cup so I'd say about two cups of rice in each container and then some of those little nuggets and then some sesame seeds on top my husband loved this meal this is his only complaint because he's a sauce person and he's like honestly I just need more barbecue sauce but he even <laughs> shared some bites of his food with his coworkers, and they're like what is that that's really good and I had to share the recipe with them so that's kind of fun in general but this is definitely a must make I know sometimes it's hard to give lunch ideas that work for everyone but I know a lot of people take things on the go and this is one that's really convenient and easy and you can make ahead of time and if you need to you could freeze it it would freeze well and there you go you could add a little bit of green if you want to let me know down below if your husband eats vegetables mine will eat vegetables if they're like fresh and ready but he doesn't really love them in his lunch but this would be really good I think with some veggies added <music> You know I always save the best recipes for last, and of course, today is no different. Even though I'm currently eating a leftover bowl of that risotto, so good while I'm editing this video. So I made a carrot cake energy bites, and then I also made like a traditional peanut butter and chocolate energy bite for my husband. I already said I can't have peanut butter, he can't have almond butter. Our allergies aren't severe enough where neither of us can't be around the other. We just can't ingest them. Oh my goodness, these carrot cake energy bites are some of my favorite. You definitely need to make them. I will put the entire recipe for both of these down in the description box below. The peanut butter chocolate one is actually Kim over at the Wads recipe. I feel like in almost every video I click on of hers, she's making energy bites and I made them a couple of weeks ago for my husband and he loved them. So now I've been making them almost every single week for both of us. The ingredients I picked up in my grocery haul are enough for us for at least two weeks and it's perfect. It's the perfect take and go snack. You can make a whole bunch of them at the beginning of the week and then just pull them out of the fridge and eat them as you want. You can take them on the go. If you're not making energy bikes every single week, you should be. Okay, so for my husband's, I'm going to do chocolate chips, peanut butter, ground flax, agave, oats, and chia seeds. So we'll whip these up, get these into the refrigerator for about an hour, and then I'll roll them into little bites. One thing with this style of energy bites is you don't have to be perfect in your measurements. If it's a little too wet, you can add a little bit more dry ingredients and vice versa. I also feel like there is 
thousands of different ways to make these different ingredients you can add. I made one a couple of weeks ago in a what I eat in a day that had kale in it. Super good. I also like making them with zucchini and pumpkin. You can leave out the nut butter altogether if you want to make them a little bit lower calorie. And there's so many different ways to make them. Like I said, if you're not making these every single week for something just to snack on or even as a breakfast meal prep, you should be because they're super budget friendly and delicious. I truly feel like this is the best summer salad because everything here is so fresh and delicious and you can add or take away anything you'd like. If you don't want to use cabbage, you could use romaine or spinach. You could use a different type of onion. You could throw in olives, use a different type of bean, add seeds, nuts, dried fruit. You can even use a different type of dressing. I think a mustard dressing would be really good with this. I added a little bit of vinegar because I really wanted that brininess. Clearly that's what I'm going for here in this entire video because that to me is summertime. This dressing's really good. If you don't have a Trader Joe's near you, you could definitely jump on Pinterest and find a vegan style ranch. A lot of them have cashews in them, so I have never made them. Let this refrigerate at least for two to four hours before enjoying because it'll really soak up all that flavor. It's so delicious. I hope you give it a try. Now I talk in per meals because if you are just one person, that's a meal, but if also you're a family of 10, each person is having a meal. So you can call it a serving or you can call it a meal, whatever you'd like to do. So I started out with just a pound of potatoes. Russets are so inexpensive right now. From now until October, they're going to be incredibly cheap. I like to buy them in 10 or 20 pound increments, but you can do whatever works for you. Cut these into nice bite-sized chunks and then you're going to head and get your frozen veggies and your tomatoes into a pot and bring it to a boil. It took me about 12 minutes to get the potatoes nice and soft. my camera I didn't realize had stopped recording because the SD card ran out of memory but I did go ahead and add some seasonings and about a cup and a half of veggie broth also to this pot now I make my own veggie broth you could use anything that you would like I will type out my recipe and leave it in the description box below but here's the seasonings I added like I said I set a timer for about 12 minutes once the potatoes were soft I was ready to go and this made my kitchen smell so good. Now this could be a meal on its own, but we're gonna dress it up and put it with some rice. I like to have a lot of starch and I do get a lot of questions. I'm plant-based, so you're not gonna find any meat dairy here on my channel, but use these meals however you would like. If this is a base for you and you wanna add more veggies or different protein, go for it. But this is how I like to eat. And so this is the type of recipes that I share.
Miranda here with a quick little voiceover. This is a potato salad and oh my gosh, it's so good. You could also throw in a can of garbanzo beans, white beans, kidney beans, if you wanna pump up a little bit more protein, but I always like to remind people, a medium russet potato has five grams of protein. I just used four here really quickly. And a lot of these meals I'm actually making ahead because that's convenient to my lifestyle. But if you're someone who makes dinner every single night, these are quick, easy. 20 minutes or less, you can pop them on the stove top in your air fryer. I am using my oven today, but that's just because I like to get everything done for the week ahead, which is amazing in the summertime, so I don't have to heat up my kitchen every single day. So get those potatoes rolling in some cold water, chop all your vegetables. We're going to use some Carolina Gold barbecue sauce, about one cup. I don't measure anything because if you have too much, it's not a big deal. If you don't have enough, you can make a little bit more sauce. And then I would say about a quarter to half a cup of yellow mustard because that's gonna add some really nice tang, which I feel like is really needed in a potato salad. Throw all your veggies in. You can add some additional seasonings if you want to. This would be really great with some green onions or chives, maybe some pickles or olives, spice it up. But that barbecue sauce with the potatoes, solid. I like to refrigerate this at least two to four hours, if not overnight before enjoying. I also shared this recipe over on my Instagram, so if you don't follow me over there, you should Flourishing Miranda because this recipe came out on the weekend, so a lot of people were able to snag it early. Yeah, this is so delicious. Make this ASAP, you won't be disappointed. It's the perfect summer dinner. You could serve it with a salad. For this last recipe, I wanted to do a different spin on chili. My husband and I love chili with corn jacks, and I thought this would be a really fun, kind of spice it up a little bit. It's good hot, it's good cold. I know I say that all the time, but a lot of foods that would be traditionally eaten warm, I also like them cold, so in the summertime, you know, it is what it is. So you're gonna chop up a large onion, get some tomato sauce, a can of refried beans, can of black beans and the secret ingredient okay actually there's two secret ingredients a can or you can even chop up some carrots but i was trying to do things as quickly as possible so not having those carrots cook i mean it's that this meal is done in like 10 minutes but you could definitely add a different vegetable if you want and then cinnamon so i added a lot of seasonings to this pot and it was so good i feel like the carrots kind of just add a little bit of sweetness but definitely you could add anything that you like the refried beans definitely add a nice thickness and then i served this over some corn jacks oh my gosh this was such an easy meal to throw together you could throw this together during a busy weeknight or like you could do what i did and make it ahead and have the pot ready to go in the refrigerator so you could warm it up by the serving so delicious i hope you give this one a try as well stay tuned for the end of the video because i'm going to share with you the cost of each meal in a complete breakdown i know y'all love when i do that every time i do i get so many wonderful comments let me know how's your summer going what are you up to i feel like this has been such a crazy busy summer for us i just feel like about the end of june through the beginning of august is just crazy busy because of our birthdays and you know we have fourth of july and we have our anniversary i shared with this a few weeks ago it just feels like it's such a busy time i love summer so many people love the heat or don't love the heat let me know do you like the heat it's actually been really really humid here the last week we've had so many rain showers every night around 8 p.m it's thunderstorming which is so weird for us i feel like everywhere the midwest the heartlands is getting hit with flash floods. We've had a lot of floods. We actually were staying at a casino resort at the beginning of this week. And then the day after we checked out, they actually had a huge flood in their sports book. It was crazy. If you wanna look it up, you can. It's Circa Casino. And they actually shared a reel over on Instagram with like the flood. It was crazy. It was like literally coming through the TV on the wall, just tons of gushing water. I'm really glad that you know, we're safe here. I'm thinking of you. If you have been hit by a flood, I will keep you in my prayers. I've seen a lot of stuff over on Instagram and Facebook. It makes me really sad. It just, it feels like a lot of times, you know, the natural phenomenons are just a lot to take in, but I'd love to know how your summer is going. So anyways, we're moving on to the corn jacks here. Such an easy recipe. If you don't like the snap of apple cider vinegar, you can leave it out, but I just think it has such a great taste. If you can't tell, I love briny vinegar foods. <laughs> it's just my favorite thing ever, but you could definitely leave it out. And then I noticed I was using vanilla almond milk. 
I mean, added a little touch of sweetness, no big deal. I grabbed the wrong one out of the fridge. It happens. It probably happens to you guys. It happens to me too. And these corn jacks I made a little bit drier than my normal ones. Typically I would add about a cup and a half of milk, but I decided to make them a little bit drier just because we have this really thick, creamy chili to go with them. And it, add, it turned out just great. I absolutely love this meal. All three of these meals were phenomenal. Which one are you gonna make first? I'd love to know. Again, simple ingredients, almost everything comes from a can. And the reason I like to do chili like this is to also share with you, this makes a really great gift idea. I shared with this with you guys last Christmas, I did little baskets and a lot of them were chili baskets. You can just omit the peppers and do some fresh peppers on the side if you want to, but the frozen peppers are cheaper for me, especially for a 10 ounce bag. I'm also gonna include my chili seasoning recipe at the end. I've been playing with a new one to kind of give it the perfect va va boom if you will and it's so good so you'll make sure to stick around and find that recipe at the end I always take a little bit of heat whenever I share seasonings in these budget videos because I personally don't include the cost for them because it's not something I buy every single week, every single month. I use what I have on hand and then I restock as needed. So you don't have to use seasonings if you don't want to. It does amplify the flavor of your food, but totally make this your own and take inspiration of it. So let's talk about how we can make this meal even cheaper. We all know that canned beans are the most expensive route. If you make your own beans, it's way cheaper. Canned beans for us are between 69 cents and $1.29 per can depending on the type of bean. Where bulk beans, if you're getting them dry, are between 99 cents and $2 a pound depending on the bean. And you get so many more beans when you get them dry. It's like six cans worth. It's a lot. But here's the thing. If you're like me and you might have a busy week, you want canned beans on hand. So if you want to make a quick chili, you can throw it in the crock pot. It's done in two hours. You're good to go. Unlike dry beans, you have to really plan for those. Oftentimes I do make a lot of dry beans and put them in my freezer, but I thought this meal would be really helpful for anyone who may have gone to the food pantry, who wants a meal really quickly, or if you want to gift a meal, chili is the best thing to gift because everything is packaged. You can purchase things in a can, you can put it in a reusable grocery bag, you can drop it off at someone's door, and it's super homey. Okay, on to the next recipe. It's a veggie soup. Again, it's not a tomato-based soup. I did broth just to help you guys out. Plus, it saved me from going to the store and getting more tomatoes, which I'm a huge tomato fan, but I also understand that you gotta switch it up sometimes. This was so delicious. Out of the two of these, this was my favorite. My husband liked the first one more, but it was like a little bit rainy. I don't know if you could tell that in the first little clips that I shared this morning. And I thought, you know what? It just feels really cozy because it's raining out and have another crock pot soup. Well, <laughs> silly me. By the time we ate this, it was 93 and sunny. So it was still fun because it was nice and cool this morning. I had my windows open, my doors open. So I did decide to do sweet potatoes in this recipe as well because I had purchased those for our meal plan this week. And I've shared this before, but I try to purchase one to two starches to use throughout the week. And it helps us out budget-wise and then kind of keeps things fresh. So I'm not 
making pasta one night and potatoes one night and rice one night, which is a perfectly fine too. But if I keep it more simple, like I did a whole week of oats <laughs> two weeks ago, last week, I'm not even sure what week was it, that was. Sometimes I just do potatoes. Sometimes we just do rice. It does really help me out. Plus I think it gives you guys some great ideas as well. If you want to make these meals even cheaper, you could swap the potatoes for pasta and that would be delicious in either of them. I think these meals are relatively super inexpensive overall. You can obviously switch some of the veggies around. You could switch the chickpeas around. You can make these super customizable. And as for seasonings in this soup, I use turmeric, parsley, and Italian seasoning, I think. Um, I have it listed here coming up, but I'll share with you the prices of this meal as well. Just a quick note, both of these meals I cooked on high for four hours because that's the perfect temp for me for sweet potatoes. I accidentally set this one to two hours and then realized that and quickly added a asterisk saying, no, it's four hours on high, not two. So just FYI, both of these are four hours on high. And then as far as the zucchini goes, I added that in at the very end. Once it had cooked on high for four hours, I added my zucchini in for about 30 minutes and it cooked perfectly. And this was really, really good at leftover as I feel like all crock pot soups are. And just one of those like set it and forget about it kind of meals, minus the fact that you have to put zucchini in at the end. But honestly, you don't even have to do that unless you want to. basically use the same seasonings for this wild rice soup and I definitely save the best for last. This one's going to be on repeat all cold months. And I feel like this wild rice, when I opened it, it reminded me of bird seed. Let me know if you think so down in the comments below. It was very pretty. It has the best texture. I remember back in college, I worked at a little like delicatessen and they made a wild rice soup. And I always thought like it had the best texture. I went ahead and rinsed my beans. I don't often do that in every single recipe, but I didn't want to add any extra liquid because the recipes that I was looking at, especially in an instant pot, you don't want the extra liquid because you're pressurizing your rice and it can throw the texture off. I also decided to chop my mushrooms into smaller bite-sized pieces. So that way they kind of went with the rice. So you're not getting little pieces of rice and then a giant mushroom. But when I say that, also, I do like my carrots to be larger because sometimes my husband's not super into carrots. It really is just like kind of if he's in the mood for them or not. So sometimes I'll make those a little bit larger so he can pick them out if he wants to. Again, I like to peel them. I like to chop them. You don't have to do all of that. And I did get a question last week if I keep my onion skins with my veggie broth. Yes. I just honestly soak everything in when I bring it home from the store. When it comes to washing everything, I soak everything in my large sink with a little bit of vinegar. Some people have commented they like to do baking powder. I just do cold water, vinegar, let it soak for at least 20, 25 minutes. Sometimes I scrub it, sometimes I don't, if we're being honest. And then yes, I do put the skins in, like the onion skins into my veggie broth. So for this one, we are gonna throw in our rice and our broth. I used four cups of homemade veggie broth for this one. So happy to always have that on hand. I can always make it really, really quickly the day before the morning of when I'm making these recipes. Threw in our spices and our onions and our carrots. Give it a little swirly swirl with the stir and put the lid on. And then I cook this at my rice button, which I believe is 12 minutes. Um, in the Instant Pot, this is a five minute button, but in the recipe I have linked below, she recommends putting it on soup, which is a feature I do not have. So while that was finishing up, when it had just a couple of minutes left to go, I took my coconut milk and about three tablespoons of gluten-free flour, got that in a saucepan, heated up, made it nice and thick. You could also use cornstarch. I did this on the side because the recipe recommended it and I knew that adding too much liquid to the Instant Pot would really create a different texture with my rice. Went ahead and I also added my beans. Then when my pressure cooker was done, I went ahead and added my mushrooms and this coconut cream sauce with beans. No, you don't have to use coconut milk. You can use any kind of nut milk you'd like, as long as it's not the vanilla sweetened kind, because your taste buds are going to be like, whoa, what did you do to me? But 
I use coconut milk and I like the light version. It's what my husband and I can agree upon and we have a couple of nut allergies in our house. He can have almonds, I can have cashews, so it's a happy medium for both of us. This soup was absolutely incredible. I've already had two bowls of it and I cannot wait to make it again. Definitely, definitely love that I can get this ready in like 20 minutes once my pot comes to pressure. So if I want this at any time, I can keep some veggies on hand already pre-chopped. As long as I have the ingredients in my pantry, I can make this like any night or any day for lunch. I know this will heat up well because of the texture of the rice. I highly recommend doubling this batch if you're into these flavors and leave out the cayenne if you don't like spicy. Quickly looked on Pinterest to see if I could find a recipe for a banana oat bar. And I found this as inspiration, but I didn't really have any of those ingredients on hand. So I kind of made up my own. A lot of times I do that just to kind of look through a couple recipes and see what I can make. Instead of using egg, I use a chia egg or a flax egg. I had some bananas on hand and I really like snack bars because I can eat them throughout the day. It, like in between each meal, I can have them as a pre-workout, as a post-workout. And I did go ahead and have three of these this day. I am kind of a high volume eater, even though I eat lower calorie density meals. I think it digests better in my stomach when I eat smaller meals throughout the day. And I wanted to share with you more so low calorie density to me. We might not all have the same idea of what that is, but for me, it's around a 300 calorie meal and it's one that has a lot of volume. And this meal technically doesn't, I mean, isn't low calorie density because those chocolate chips right there are like 500 calories per half cup, but life is too short to leave out the chocolate chips. And when you spread them out throughout amongst a few meals, it's really not that bad, but I do really love oat bars or snack bars or something I can take on the go, throw in a little bag, throw in a little Ziploc or what, you know, a little container or something and have it in my purse. And because my days are so long, I typically work 12 hour shifts. So my days are really long and I like to have little snacks throughout the day and these work perfect for me. I don't usually make them in large batches because I don't usually have that many bananas left over. Typically I'll take like a banana with me or a protein shake, but if I have the time to make snack bars, you know I'm gonna do it. I will type this recipe and leave it on my blog. As you can see, there's not very many ingredients, but in case you want to save it, go to flourishingmiranda.com and you'll see it there. If you have not already, I need you to do me a huge favor. Actually, I need you to do two huge favors. I need you to hit that thumbs up button and pause the video right now and comment down below and let me know the amount of money you want me to spend in my next meal plan and give me a main ingredient. I'd love to hear from you. So I love to do a main ingredient and I love to plan around a specific amount of food. For example, I take a very little ingredients and I make multiple recipes with them because it gives me a lot of ideas. It makes me be really creative. And then I can share these ideas with you guys. Because when it comes to saving money and being super frugal and budget friendly, if you can figure out how to create recipes using the same ingredients over and over and over and not get bored, it's magical. I've been doing this for almost three years. We decided to go on a debt-free journey in 2020. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. I like to give my background story every so often in case someone's new. And I started creating budget-friendly recipes and I still create them because I love saving money in my grocery budget. I might spend money other places in my house, but when it comes to saving money on groceries, there's just something to me about spending very little and still having access to healthy food. So here we are making a buffalo stuffed twice baked potato, if you will. I took about a fourth of the hummus, about a cup and a half of spinach, about a third of a cup of buffalo sauce, 
The can of chickpeas, I drained it but didn't rinse it. You can definitely rinse it if it gives you a bellyache. If you get bloated or gassy with beans, definitely rinse them. I find this to be creamier if I don't rinse them and chickpeas never give me an issue but it just kind of depends on the style of bean or your digestion. You don't have to use hummus for this if you don't want to. I know a lot of people that follow me are um, oil free but it just really adds a lot of flavor. You could definitely also make your own hummus as well. I have tons of recipes here on my channel with homemade hummus. If you need a recipe, you can also check out my blog down below where you're gonna find the recipes for today's video. So I did pop these potatoes for the first bake in the microwave, but if you have leftover potatoes, that is the best double baked, twice baked. Why is it not double baked? I always think double baked, but it's twice baked. Cut it open. Smash it down a little bit because I feel like it gets that nice mashed potato-y kind of vibe going on. And then I stuffed it with my buffalo insides. Ooh, so good. And then at the end, I baked it oh, about maybe 20 minutes, 375. Then I put the little bit of the celery on the top. Those honorable mentions, the random carrots I had in my fridge, that one piece of celery. And literally, you're gonna see, I had like a teaspoon of mustard. <laughs> so those items are not necessary, but if you have something hanging around the house and you need to use it up, use it up. If you don't have it, you can still make all of these meals. It's not a big deal. I like to mention that. Seasonings and little random bits and bobs that I have around the house, I don't include in the cost because I have them in my house. But as you can see, I only spent $14.71, so technically I had some money left over for those little honorable mentions. And hi, welcome to my kitchen. Behind the scenes, I'm always dancing because G-O-O-G-L-E is always playing, and I'm obsessed with that new Megan Trainer song. Let me know down below if you guys are too. I'll listen to it like 1,000 times in the next week, and then if I hear it after that, it'll feel like my ears are bleeding and I'm going to be nauseous and I never want to hear it again. <laughs> but... This stuffing dip buffalo twice baked potato was phenomenal. I loved it. I actually am going to make it again as like a meal prep for probably the week after Thanksgiving. Super good and it's gluten free. So like I said, I just chopped a little bit of celery and put it on the top after it came out of the uh, oven because I feel like it just needed it. And I had two pieces of celery on hand so it worked out really well for me. <laughs> also, celery and hummus, that's the best. So I took the little bit of hummus that you'll see later on that was left in the dish and had the other piece of celery. So again, you don't have to put the celery on the top. If you don't like celery, if you don't like anything that's in this, you make it however you want to. These are just ideas that I use that I like to share because I try to be really helpful and try to put out content that works for me that might also work for you. Husband gobbled this up. I had a whole bunch of mushrooms on hand. Some of them were actually from the grocery haul I had a few weeks ago that really needed used up. And then some were ones that I found in the clearance spot of the grocery store also needing to use be used up. And my husband loves mushrooms. He grew up eating so many mushrooms. I don't think I actually liked mushrooms until I met him, but he loves them. I mean, he would eat some, much, something with mushrooms at every single meal. And I thought, you know what? I have pad thai rice noodles. I think I can make a sauce that mimics a pad thai. It would be really good with mushrooms. So I made this for him specifically because it has peanut butter powder in it. I didn't have any peanut butter. I only had almond powder or almond butter. If you see the peanut butter powder that I use here, you can also usually find this in an almond version at our grocery store, but they didn't have any, so I haven't bought it in a long time. So I added some onions and veggie broth to my uh, Dutch oven and let them cook for about three to four minutes, then added the mushrooms, a little bit more broth, and then put the lid on and let the water kind of cook out of the mushrooms. It took maybe about four minutes. Added more broth, added all my seasonings, and then cooked the noodles for about eight minutes and like I said, my husband devoured this. I shared it on Instagram and so many people were like, I cannot wait for that recipe. So I'll make sure to type it out and leave a link for it for my blog so you guys can capture it. I have some work to do over there yet, so just hang tight. Um, I will get to all the things that need done, the Pinteresting and everything. I'm not super like technical when it comes to websites, so I'm doing my best, but at least you have a spot for everything. So this is the peanut butter powder that I was talking about. If you can't have peanut butter, where you want to cut down on the calories, but you want the flavor, highly recommend giving it a try. I can also link it down below from Amazon if you'd like, 
brown mustard just to kind of give it a hit of that like vinegar taste. I thought would take some of the sweetness out because I'm using, I feel like a few sweeter things. Obviously sriracha is not sweet, but it hits it with that heat. If you don't like heat, leave this out. And then I did about a half cup of sweet chili sauce and that was just phenomenal. My husband ate over half of this <laughs> for lunch this day. And then he was like, can you make that again? And I was like, well, I can, but it's part of like me using things up. So yeah, absolutely, I can make it again, but now I'm off to the grocery store to buy more ingredients. <laughs> this is a highly, highly recommended uh, recipe to try, especially because it's getting kind of chilly out. And these Pad Thai noodles I always get from our Thrive Market boxes. I'm sure the grocery stores have them as well, but I don't know where they are in the grocery store, so I just get them from Thrive Market. Here are the first two items that I snagged from the 99 cent store that I'm going to make into a mock meatloaf. I've done this before, I really like it. We will need some additional seasonings. You'll have to add that into your budget, but a one pound bag of chickpeas, garbanzo beans, $1.29, and a one pound bag of long grain white rice for a dollar. And this is gonna make a lot of food. I am going to make these in the Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot, or a pressure cooker, I should say, you could do stovetop method or crock pot method, or you can just buy canned beans, completely up to you. This is just the method that I am using because it works for me. The first thing that I need to do is rinse my beans. Okay, now that my beans are in my pressure cooker, I do them for 32 minutes with about four and a half cups of water. Turns out great every single time. Whatever beans I don't use, I can always freeze, but this I'm going to guesstimate makes two large meatloafs, which is a lot of food for seven days. I will just make one today and then I'll make one later in the week. I also wanna rinse my rice and I always say this, I have dishes in the sink because humans live here. This is not a <laughs> stage set. This is my house, this is the food I eat. So there's dishes in my sink. Let's get this rice cooking. I'm gonna do this stove top method because it's super easy. It's a one to two ratio, one cup of rice, rinsed or not rinsed. If you don't wanna rinse your rice, cool, don't. It's starchier that way. You can also add a little bit of sugar in it if you want it to be a little bit sticky. Um, one cup of rice, two cups of water. This is so easy to do. All you're gonna do is put your burner on high 
you're gonna let this come to a boil. Once it starts boiling, you're gonna turn it down too low, put the lid on it, and set a timer for 12 minutes, and it'll be perfect. So after the 12 minutes, you're gonna take it off the heat, and let it sit, don't touch it for five minutes. It's gonna be super fluffy and just chef's kiss perfection. You can see my rice is starting to boil. It's not quite where I want it yet. Give it like another 45 seconds and it will be perfect. I'll turn the heat down to low, put a lid on it, set my timer for 12 minutes, on to the next step. Okay, here's my rice. It is all finished. There's a little water left in there. That's pretty normal. Go ahead and turn it all the way off. And then I like to pull it to the back burner. Um, you don't have to, I guess, but it's just what I like to do. Leave the lid on it, don't touch it. Leave it for at least five minutes, and then come back and fluff it with a fork. And it's perfect every single time. You can't really <laughs> see in there. Yeah, you can. It's perfect. Just let her sit. She's perfecting herself. My pressure cooker has about three minutes left. I'll let it release for about five minutes, but I went ahead and add my rice to a bowl. Just kind of let it cool down a little bit so I can make my, make my meatloaf. Um, I also went ahead and cooked up the rest of my rice and just put it in my refrigerator. So I have a lot of rice. I have about three times this amount for the entire week. That's, I think that's a lot. It's about five and a half cups. Now, I say this all the time in my budget cooking, you don't have to use seasonings, but also, if you're like really hard up, ask a neighbor or even <laughs> go to Chick-fil-A and get seasonings. They don't care. So I am adding some uh, stone ground mustard, uh, about three tablespoons, onion powder, garlic salt, chili powder, paprika. Since I did the garlic salt, I won't do a regular salt, but I'm just gonna add that and get these beans in there. I'm gonna make a topping for this meatloaf. Again, if you don't have these ingredients, don't have room in your budget for them, that's okay. I have all this stuff on hand because these are things I don't put in my budget every single week. Splash of apple cider vinegar, touch of salt. You can make more or less of this depending on what you have on hand, but I'm really not kidding when I tell you, you can just like go to Chick-fil-A and get a couple packets of mustard and ketchup. They would never care, honestly. And I've had people tell me that they do that in my videos before. So if you need some seasonings, there you go. <laughs> okay, the beans are done. By the way, if you are new to my channel, these are my absolute favorite bean. They are so creamy and they turn out, they turn out perfect every time. And what's extra, I'll just pop in my fridge, and if I don't eat them all this week, because this is a lot of beans, I will just put them in my freezer and then pull them out as I need them. So to my rice, I'm gonna add about a cup of beans. And then about a quarter cup of that aquafaba, which is the cooking liquid. It'll give a nice creaminess to the meatloaf. And then just go in with a big fork and smash it all up, combine it and then put it in a pan and bake it. You can also use a food processor for this, but I like to do everything like one bowl and I like the arm workout. Okay, she's all smashed and in just a bread baking dish or a meatloaf pan, I don't know. It's a bread pan. Um, she smashed up. I like to leave a little bit of the chunks in there because I feel like it gives good texture. Fun fact, if you throw this like in a food processor and like roll it into little balls and then coat it in breadcrumbs, you can, or even cornmeal, it makes really good chicken nuggets. So keep that in mind, it's a great recipe. If you have kids, or if you're like me and you are an adult who likes chicken nuggets. <laughs> so let's put the sauce on this and then I will bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes. You could use more or less sauce, just depending on what you like.
Here are the basic ingredients for the tomato soup. I have two carrots, a very small onion. I mean, this is like not, not very much at all, but I don't want a lot of onion bite to this recipe. A can of crushed tomatoes, a can of tomato sauce. This one just happens to be the no salt added, and then a can of beans. And you either can put this all together as is and use your immersion blender. I don't have one, so I'm going to use my high-speed blender, my Vitamix, and put this all together. It's completely up to you. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my onion and carrots chopped, peeled, ready to go. And I say this all the time, but I save my scraps and I put them in the freezer and then I make veggie broth. The veggie broth recipe is always in the description box. And I also get asked what kind of peeler that I have. It's from the dollar store and I bought this like five years ago. And because I get asked a lot about like how I peel back and forth on the carrots, you should be able to do this with any peeler on a carrot because it's so long, you should be able to peel back and forth and it should work really well. You don't have to peel your carrots if you don't want to. I usually scrub them as soon as I get home from the grocery store, it's part of my prep. And then I put the peels in with my freezer prep bag for veggie broth, so super simple. So the onion is going directly into my Vitamix, but like I said, if you want and you have an immersion blender, you could skip this step and then just like pulse it to blend it and puree it at the end when your soup is done cooking. Coming at you with some voiceover, actually, yummy, yummy, yum. If you can tell me where that is from, we can be best friends. So I do like to add either veggie broth or water to this soup. It is technically a high protein tomato soup. If you are like me and count beans as your protein, whoop, whoop. So I just usually do um, water because it's just simple. It's easy, but you can definitely do veggie broth too. So I do about three quarters of the large can of tomatoes and the full um, can of the small tomatoes. So technically it's about two and a half cups of soup or <laughs> soup. No, it's two and a half cups of water. Anyways, I rinse my beans. My husband likes them better rinsed. If the beans give you a tummy issue, rinse them really well till all the bubbles are gone and you should be good to go. And then obviously you're pureeing them. So it'll help digest them more. We're adding some salt a bunch of basil, I'm not even measuring it, and then some garlic. Whip it up so it's nice and smooth. You can leave out the carrots. Oh, I did add chili powder and cayenne too. I forgot about those two. Give a little kick, so it had a little bit of heat. Um, if you don't wanna add the carrots, don't worry about it. My husband picks them out. I love the carrots because it adds like a little bit more texture to the soup, and that's why I leave them really chunky. You can cook the carrots, you can throw a can of carrots like cooked carrots in with this. You can do whatever the heck you want. Green peppers would be really good in this too. It doesn't matter, but you're gonna wanna stay tuned till the end of the video because I have a little bit of a surprise for you. So go ahead, put this on high for two hours. It's perfect. It's so creamy, it's so delicious. Um, it's a great like cold weather soup. You can also just make this on your stove top too. So here's the soup when it's all finished and I had some, it's just called shkar, shkar, shkar. <laughs> this bread is really good. I actually really like it. A lot of, I've had mixed reviews when I shared it on my grocery haul a couple weeks back. I really liked it. That was really good. Toasted, not toasted, didn't really matter to me. And then uh, this day I picked up this loaf of bread and my husband ate the entire thing with his soup. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you all have a very happy Christmas and happy new year. Hey guys, thanks so much for all your support this year. I know Miranda puts a lot of time and energy into all that she does, making all the content as great as possible for you guys. And it means a lot to know that you guys have so much positivity and encouragement. With all the negativity out there, it's really nice to have your support. Thanks again. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. And we can't wait to bring 2023 in to you guys. More great content as much as possible. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.